American story, when it became accepted, had a huge cultural impact. And if that story were discredited, then the cultural impact would be reversed, and there would be cultural changes in the other direction as well. There is something outrageous about such a huge body of evidence being put together, then being confirmed in all kinds of other scientific disciplines, particularly genetics, and having other people just sort of deny it for, for reasons that have nothing to do with truth. And this became apparent during the trial. And then you began to look towards the judge and think, how is this guy going to get out of this? Because here he is, he's been a, he is a Republican, he's been appointed by George W. Bush, who has said that he thinks the jury is out on evolution and both theories should be taught. And you began to think, what is this poor guy going to do? Whatever the motivations of the Discovery Institute, the Intelligent Design Movement, or the authors of the book of Pandas and People, Judge Jones would need to focus on the motivation of the Dover Area School Board. Mr. Buckingham, I'd like to show you what has been identified as Exhibit P145. You'll need to look at your monitor. The book that was presented to me for biology was laced with Darwinism from the beginning to the end. William Buckingham is head of the curriculum committee for the Dover School District. He's also a board member. He strongly believes creationism needs to be taught in the classroom. My opinion that it's okay to teach Darwin, but you have to balance it with something else, such as creationism. This was back in the very early days of the intelligent design thing. And don't you know, I could not think of the words intelligent design. I just couldn't. The camera's rolling, so I say creationism. In hindsight, I should have said nothing at all, but I said creationism. Uh, I, was, I was like a, a deer caught in the headlights of a car, and I misspoke, pure and simple. I, I made a human mistake. Freudian slip, right, Mr. Buckingham? I wouldn't say a Freudian slip. I would say a human mistake. And it was not Buckingham's only mistake. Both Buckingham and Bonsell had sworn in their depositions that they did not know who donated the 60 copies of Pandas to the high school. But by the time Buckingham took the witness stand, a different story emerged. I stood up in front of our church one Sunday morning. We had to come up with, I think it was like $1,100 to buy these books. I said, I'm not asking anybody for a dime. I'm not telling you I want anything, but we believe in the power of prayer, not church. I said, just pray that the money comes in. Buckingham's prayers were answered with donations from members of the church. So I deposited the money in our personal checking account, my wife and I have, and I wrote a check to be passed on to whoever's going to buy the books. It was my understanding at that time that a businessman in the community had agreed to take the money and buy the books and donate them to the school. That time I didn't know who it was. But at the trial, Buckingham admitted he had given that check to Alan Bonsell and that the unknown businessman who bought the books had been Alan Bonsell's father. This contradicted statements Bill Buckingham and Alan Bonsell had originally made in their sworn depositions. Lying under oath is a serious crime. We impeached a president about it. And people go to jail for it all the time. And it seemed to us that there was testimony that demonstrated clear inconsistency. I can't see into their hearts and know, you know the extent of the falsehood, but I do know that we asked questions that should have elicited that information and they, they didn't provide that information. It was almost like this weird feeling that, you know, when you've watched a nature show and you know that the gazelle is about to get it from the lion you know I remember actually thinking oh god Judge Jones is gonna kill Alan Bonsall I don't I can't look and then Judge Jones his face had gotten bright red at this point and he goes you tell me why you didn't say where that money came from to buy of pandas and people and Alan Bonsall finally under Judge Jones's grilling started to get a little nervous and he started flapping his hands and he started stammering and he completely had lost this self-assured composure that he had earlier and uh, finally he just said well I misspoke.
Never in a million years did I ever think that we'd, you know, I'd be in a federal lawsuit when I was on the school board or had the school district in something like that. Over a one minute statement, a one minute statement. We weren't asking the teachers to become uh, priests or um, Protestant pastors of some sort or lay ministers or anything like that. Just let the kids know the theories there. Let the kids do their own research and find answers for themselves. After six weeks, the trial concluded with closing arguments that were as divided as the town of Dover itself had become. What am I supposed to tolerate? A small encroachment on my First Amendment rights? Well, I'm not going to. I think this is clear what these people have done, and it outrages me. That's a statement of one citizen of Dover, Fred Callahan, standing up to the wedge that has been driven into his community and his daughter's high school by the Dover School Board's anti-evolution, pro-intelligent design policy. This trial has established that intelligent design is unconstitutional because it is an inherently religious proposition, a modern form of creationism. It is not just a product of religious people. It does not just have religious implications. It is, in its essence, religious. The shell game has to stop. In sum, Your Honor, I respectfully submit that the evidence of record shows that the plaintiffs have failed to prove that the primary purpose or primary effect of the reading of a four-paragraph statement on intelligent design, explaining that it's an explanation for the origins of life different from Darwin's theory, letting the students know there are books in the library on this subject, does not by any reasonable measure, threaten the harm which the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits. But instead, the evidence shows that the defendant's policy has the primary purpose and primary effect of advancing science education by making the students aware of a new scientific theory one which may well open a fascinating prospect to a new scientific paradigm. Judge Jones said he would return a verdict promptly. Four days after the trial ended, Dover residents rendered their own verdict on intelligent design with a huge turnout for the school board election. By a narrow margin, the people of Dover cleaned house. All eight of the nine seats up for election went to anti-intelligent design candidates, including plaintiff and former Dover science teacher Brian Ream. Among the candidates who got the fewest votes was Alan Bonsell. With the judge still deliberating, Dover's local school board election was national news and even provoked the ire of televangelist Pat Robertson. I'd like to say to the good citizens of Dover, uh, if there is a disaster in your area, don't turn to God. You just rejected him from your city. Though Robertson had already passed judgment, Dover and the nation would have to wait another month for Judge Jones to render his verdict. On December 20th, 2005, Jones sent out his opinion by email. I went to work that day. We pretty much knew it was going to be out by noon. Um, 